Hi everyone. I usually look a bit better than this when I come on camera. You know, a bit more moisturised. Even though I'm not dry necessarily, but I'm usually a bit more moisturised and, you know, all that. But I just wanted to come online today just to give you a little short update on what's going on with me. So, um, basically... I haven't acknowledged this in like a lot of the videos that I've done but I've been getting shot in the middle of my thighs like in the middle of the top half of my thighs especially on the left leg and I've been getting attacks on my legs and my feet remember what I said about the reflexology I think I might have said something about the reflexology to you guys or maybe I said it to another TI I'm not sure but there uh i've been i've had certain parts of my feet fired on and i've had like the tops of my legs fired on well the top of one of my legs fired on and it's like right foot left thigh right and the closer it came to today is the more i started getting attacks in my calves even though the calves they're not as severe with the calves i woke up this morning um and basically washed myself brushed my teeth um like i usually do when i get up in the morning and both my hips were really painful they were really quite sore and they were wobbly so it was my back and my hips but my hips especially that were a problem and what i noticed is that the more i go into the bathroom is the more the pains escalate now the reason I believe this is happening is because my bedroom, remember my bedroom, right? My bedroom is right next door to the nail salon and the nail salon is north facing. First of all, that's where the signals are clearest with the, with the northern sky direction, the northern direction. That's that's the most effective in um, in using satellites to pinpoint your location and use electronic weapons on you. Which is for that reason why I haven't been suffering as much being here in the front room. Here in the front room, it's south facing. In the bedroom, it's north facing. So, um, I notice that the pain becomes more severe when I go in the bathroom. And it's unfortunate because the bathroom is very, very close to the bedroom. Do you understand what I mean? Like, the, the walls between the bedroom and the bathroom are very fucking thin. Okay? So, um... Yeah, so I have been attacked in my hips. Today, it's not just today that they attacked me in my hips. Because usually what they do is they pinpoint certain parts of your body. They attack certain parts of your body with electronic weapons. Like just short jolts in your thighs or your chest or something. They just short jolts everywhere, specific pressure points to aggravate specific conditions in the body. And to pinpoint your location. So that's what they do. And... Prior to my hips hurting today, that's exactly what they were doing. And they were attacking my legs quite frequently. I've got some attacks in my back, though not as frequent. Um, so today I've kind of been debilitated somewhat. Not entirely, because again, I'm in, my, I'm in my front room, I'm in my living room. And in the living room, it's not as severe as in the front room, right? Any attacks that I get electronically they're no one near as severe in here as they are in my bedroom right so i've been getting attacked in the hips and it's very predictable as to again like i, I, I i'm not i can't believe i'm saying again because this is the first time i'm about to tell you this actually no it's not the first time i'm about to tell you this but this is the thing with gang stalking they're very predictable and it's always when I'm planning on traveling, when I've got shit to do, because I was supposed to go to London this week to get my will sorted out. It's funny how I'm, when I'm supposed to go to London to get my affairs sorted out, that's when, I, that's when my hips start playing up. It's funny how when I've got things to do, that's when my hips start playing up. And that's when I'm not as mobile as I would like. So this is the more predictable routine of the gang stalkers they they will wait until you have something important to do or you you've, you're a bit too relaxed for their liking 
And that's when they pull this nonsense. So what I have to do is I have to wait until they get bored of doing this. Because they do eventually. I have to wait until they get bored of doing this. I have to wait until they feel satisfied enough that I can't, I can't, I can't write a fucking will. Like, I have to wait until they feel satisfied enough where I can't really do anything productive. And then they'll, then they'll ease up with the electronic torture. But in the meantime, I've got to put up with this nonsense. Okay. In the meantime, I have to put up with this nonsense. So, luckily for me, it's Monday. I'm not doing too much today. I haven't done much. I've just been resting, napping. Taking time out for myself because I live in the UK and I can actually do that. So I'm making the most of it. Okay. But yes, they've been firing, firing my thighs, my hips, my back affecting my mobility so that I can't stand up in the shower for too long I'm gonna have to get a seat for the shower if I can so they've been affecting my mobility so that I can't stand up in the shower and if I can't stand up in the shower I can't wash my whole body but again um you're talking to a person who crawled on her hands and knees to wash herself so light work do you understand what I'm saying light work but um yeah, that's what they've been doing. They've been attacking my hips, pelvis, back, and the tops of my thighs. So every time I stand up for too long, um, that's when they kind of start attacking. And some of these weapons, the way some of these weapons are, is that the more active you are, is the more it, the more skeletal resistance there is, the more resistance against your bones there is. Um... That's the way some of these weapons work. The way some of these weapons work is that the more you move around is the more resistance that it the more resistance that your body has when it's when it has weapons fired on it. I can't explain it. Um you'd have to watch the video with Dr. William Binney and Catherine Horton to really understand what I'm talking about here. But there are certain weapons that once they're fired on you, if you do too much, if you are too active in the body then it will make the pain worse and it will wear away at your bones. So when it comes to things like this, I try to be as sedentary as possible and I try to relax as much as I can. I'm not trying to move around like that. And if I need to call the ambulance, check it. Hang on. This is this place is a mess, but let me show you. Right. If I need to if I need to um, call the ambulance. The door's right there. I can crawl to the door. I don't have to rely on the landlord to open the door for me. Come in and open the door. I don't have to deal with their fucking attitude. I can get the door open. Call the ambulance. If it gets really bad, I can call the ambulance. Get them down here. And plus, I know that this wasn't supposed to be for my benefit. Given that TRs are usually gassed and shit like that and spied on, I know that letterbox was not for my benefit. I know because those asshole neighbours tried to spy through the fucking letterbox at one point, right? That letterbox is useful because if the ambulance comes over here and I can't reach, I can't reach the doorknob by myself, that letterbox will enable me to actually reach up and grab the door. Do you understand what I'm saying? So dealing with things like this, in a practical manner is so so important because you have to understand the way in which gang stalking works these are the ways in which you have to prepare for gang stalkers doing dumb shit right this is these are the ways in which you have to prepare for gang stalkers doing dumb shit and these are the ways in which you have to prepare for gang stalkers trying to deliberately get in the way of what you have whatever it is you have to do these are these are one of the ways in which they like to do it the other way is in financial abuse. Hacking constitutes as financial abuse. They like to do that too. So, yeah, I've been having problems in my hips and legs. I haven't been doing very much today. I haven't been up and around very much. I'm not, I'm usually quite sedentary anyway, but when you consider the way these weapons work, in some cases, being sedentary is your saving grace. Also, being overweight 
um, I'm sorry to say this because I know how a lot of people feel about overweight people and I know that you're not going to like what I have to say but sometimes I think if I wasn't overweight I wouldn't I would be in a lot more pain than I am because I've been slim and I've been attacked by electronic weapons um, when it came to my period when it came to my cycle as a teenager I'm pretty sure I was attacked with electronic weapons to the point where I used to have panic attacks I used to have panic attacks I used to have hypoglycemic attacks when I used to get my period pains it was that fucking bad everybody thought that I was putting on some kind of performance because I, I can't lie I've put on performances before I fake stuff before but when it came to my period, it, that shit was no joke. I was in so much fucking pain. I was in so much fucking pain. I was like, it was, it was so bad. I used to get panic attacks. I used to be screaming for hours. It was not a joke. And I'm pretty sure now that I look back, I feel like there's no way I wasn't tortured as a teenager with the period thing. And back then when I was a teenager, I was very slender, you know, People think that when you're slender, you look a certain way. Oh, you look good, this, that, and the third. But, like, my mother was slender too. And look what happened to her. Look at the amount the amount of pain that she fucking went through. She didn't survive past the age of 64. I'm overweight. So a lot of the pain that I go through with regards to the torture, it could have been so much worse if I was slimmer. It could have been a thousand times worse. So I think me being overweight, which is the body's um, the body's defense mechanism anyway, when you're dehydrated and you're stressed out, it, it packs on the weight for you so that it gives you a protective shield. I think that being overweight helps. I do think that being overweight helps. You know... So, like, being overweight helps. Being wide-boned, I think, helps as well because my bones are still quite wide. Um, so there are a lot of things that I have that might not look good on paper. You know, I have a sedentary lifestyle. I'm overweight. But when you really look at, the, at how the weapons work and how they affect the body, you start to realise, yeah, I'm actually quite lucky here. The only thing that I would say is that they fire weapons on my heart as well and that's where I might be in danger because they keep firing at my heart. They've been firing at my heart um, since my... How, how many 20s? Since my late 20s. So they've been firing at my kidney since I was a teenager. Um, probably since I was a kid as well. But they've been firing at my heart since my late teens. Not Not my late teens, my late 20s. Right? So they've been firing at my heart since my late 20s. Firing at my kidney since my teens. Firing at my womb since my teens. So, it's very likely that, you know, and they've been firing at my pelvis as well, like, increasingly frequently, because there was one time where I thought I was being fired on my ovaries, but your ovaries don't actually work like that. There's a diagram of the way your, your fallopian tubes and ovaries, like, they don't sit in your body that way, so they weren't actually firing at my ovaries, they were firing at my pelvic bones. But, you know, a lot of firing at your pelvic bones, a lot of firing at your hips, all of that to affect your mobility, all of that to debilitate you, all of that to prevent you from doing basic tasks around your house so that you're, you know, you're stuck with, um, you know, you're stuck being helpless. And it's for this reason why I say the power of attorney is especially important. The power of attorney is probably even more important than the will. Because if you have power of attorney and you hand it over to somebody that you, well, not that you can trust, but somebody who is a better ally or to have on your side. Because as a TR, you can't trust no fucking body. It's either people want to bury their heads under the sand or they're involved. So having a... Uh, a power of attorney is so important. It's even more important than having a will. I'm not going to hold you. Because the will is more important for when you die. The power of attorney is more important for what happens when you're debilitated. And you can't do anything by yourself. 
So the power of attorney is absolutely crucial. It's absolutely crucial. Especially for moments like this when they want to do all this stuff. So they've basically been doing all this, causing torture in the lower half of my body. Because they're thinking if they're going to do that, then it's going to stop me from doing what I need to do. It's not. You're talking to a person who crawled to the fucking bathroom to bathe herself, did it with no problems. You're talking about somebody who performed readings from her bed when she couldn't fucking walk. Cakewalk. And they know it. And every time they don't want their perps to get caught out in doing something, that's when they pull this shit. So yeah, I've got to wait till these people get bored of causing a flare up. I've got to wait until they get bored with that and then after that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do next. But I do have some stuff to do this week and they think that if they debilitate my hips, they're gonna and my legs too. They think that if they if they debilitate me, I'm not gonna get anything done. Again, this is the same person who crawled on her hands and knees in that bedroom, got that bedroom spotless. <laughs> like they they just don't learn. They just do not learn. So um what else am I gonna say? I was gonna say something else. I can't remember. Oh, I can't put together what I was going to say. Hmm. Oh yeah, my sleeping patterns are fucked up, but I don't think it's because of the gang stalking. I honestly think it's because of, um, you know, my own natural circadian rhythms acting up because I keep being online all the time because I'm in bed. I'm in bed from burnout and fucking physical torture, so... Yeah, I think my circadian rhythms are fucked up too, but that's not gang stalking. Um, the perps are freaking out as usual because I'm not... Uh, is it even worth talking about at this point? I I always keep an eye on things, like, just in case. Because... You know, there's always something with the gang stalkers. There's always something with them. And they're always going to copy everything that you do. So it it doesn't, you know, I already know what they're going to do. And I already know how they're going to do it. I keep an eye on it. But I, I feel like, I feel like talking about the same thing over and over. I've been talking about the same thing over and over for a decade plus change. I, I don't know if I have it in me anymore to keep talking about the same tactics that these people do. If it leads to something important, I and, and get don't get me wrong, I know that all of this is evidence. I know that every single stupid taunt, every single stupid thing that they do, every single unlawful thing that they do, I know it's all evidence, all of it. But if it really becomes difficult to live with, for me, that's the evidence that's the most important. That's why I came online talking about the hip stuff. I feel like because they're just going to do the same shit and at this point everybody knows what they're doing. I feel like because they do the same shit over and over and everybody knows what they're doing. Um, I don't think it's worth my time talking about w what they do anymore or what they say anymore. It's just going to be the same shit. It's just going to be the same shit. They've got nothing left to work with. Like. They truly have nothing to work. What do they have to work with? The whole point in tracking and reporting everything that I do is so that they can get something on me that can incriminate me. What have they got? They don't have a single fucking thing because I'm not a target because of crimes. I'm a target because some hateful asshole put me on a list. So what exactly do they have? Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. Like... If anybody looks through my past, and I mean this, I really mean this. If anybody looks through my past, it would be child's play. Child's play in comparison to what was actually done to me. Child's play. Do you understand what I'm saying? Child's play, and I'm not even joking. 
because nothing that I've done in my past, nothing that I've done in my past and nothing that I do or say now is ever going to compare to human fucking trafficking. It's not going to compare. It's not going to compare to pathological murder. It's not going to compare to any of that. So like, I don't, I don't care what they do. I don't care what anybody hears about me. Go hear it again. I don't care what anybody says about me. Go say it again. Because in comparison to the people talking, I don't have nothing to hide like that. And this is the thing about most people in the world, right? And that's, this is the thing that they don't take responsibility for. The only time when they like themselves is when they become somebody that the most successful liars in the world might like. I'm not a successful liar, so people don't care what I think. And it's okay. Because the more people ignore what I'm saying is the more events are unfolding in front of them that they weren't prepared for. It's okay. It's okay. So they can say what they want, go say it again. I don't care what they hear, go hear it again. Because everything that they say and everything that they hear is part of the fucking trafficking. How are you going to traffic somebody successfully if you can't, you can't convince somebody that they're not worth impressing? That they're not worth the time of day. How are you going to tra traffic somebody unless you can do that? If they want to contribute to trafficking, it's got nothing to do with me. That has nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. And it's just going to, again, it's just going to be the same shit. She's mad. She's black. She, she's fat. Okay, cool. Go hear it again. Go hear it again. Go say it again. Maybe I am crazy. I'm not a trafficking piece of shit. That's what I'm not. That's what I'm not. I'd rather be, again, I'd rather be crazy, all the rest of it, than be a trafficking piece of shit. Again, whatever you got to say, say it again. Whatever you got to go here, go hear it again. I've got shit to do. Even with these tortured hips of mine, speaking of which, I'm making some, I'm reheating some wings. And it's my favourite type as well. I'm not going to say what they are, but ever since I tried them, it's just been like, yeah. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have some of them and I'm going to relax. And I'm going to treat my body to some soft life soft life shenanigans on some real stuff i'm going to treat my body to a soft life because nobody else is going to do it so i'm going to do it okay i love you guys so much peace and blessings and i will see you in the next one. Oh, if you're a ti hit me up in the comments let me know how you guys are doing i always want to hear from you and once again stay strong stay blessed i love you so much mm -hmm. Bye-bye, my darlings.